Fig Jam? What is Fig Jam? Is it a new type of jam? Hey, what is up? It is Vinny Designs. You're back with a new video. Today, we're going to jump into Fig Jam and Figma to see what this tool will allow us to do as designers. First thing, we can already see the difference in how the UI looks like, where you no longer have the sidebars and we have a different toolbar at the bottom instead. The first slide talks about the sticky notes. If you look at the bottom, we have sticky notes. You can click on it and snap it onto your artboard and enter text. Hello. You can customize how the sticky note looks like. You can modify the text, bold, stroke, and you can also embed hyperlinks within it. So that's awesome. And you can also convert this into bullet points. So simple as that. Hit enter and you can add another line of bullets. You can change the size of the of the font and you can hide the name. So sometimes you may want to hide your name within that sticky note. You can enable or disable that. And they're showing you quick ways to create sticky notes. So there's shortcuts. If you hit S on your keyboard, that brings up the sticky note tool. Click. And there we go. There's also another way. And if I click on the first sticky note, there's this plus icon on all the ends of uh, the sticky note. If I click it, it adds another one. And if I'm selecting one of the sticky notes, I can hit Control or Command Enter on the keyboard. And that's going to create another one right next to it like that. Let's move on to connectors. These are awesome. I think it's a great way to create flowcharts, diagrams, user journeys, and a lot of other things. And they've given us all these functionalities right inside of Figma. Basically, what you can do is create all these different shapes and customize the shape. You can enter text like a sticky note. You can change all the, all the font properties, add hyperlinks within it change the color and so on and we can also use the shortcuts to duplicate those very quickly as well control or command enter and that's going to duplicate again but the difference here is that we can add arrows and connecting points so if i select one of the the circles i can hit shift c on the keyboard and that's going to bring up these nodes and I can basically select one of them, click and drag to another flow diagram. And that's going to link it directly like that. And you can also change the color of that arrow. You can change the thickness of it, whether or not you want it to be dotted. And you can also change the starting and end points. Currently, you can see that the arrow is curved and it's creating this nice curve. I can disable it so that it goes from the starting point to the end without creating that curve there may be times when you need that sometimes you may not so you have the option to disable or enable that another way to access the connectors is using the toolbar down here so if i click on it it gives us the option of the connector of, of a straight line or a connector so basically the connector is the one that we are familiar with the curved one the other one is a, is just a straight line so it's still a connector but it's it's a straight line it doesn't have a curve let's go on to the next slide this one is called cursor chat and basically what this allows you to do is talk with your teammates directly within Figma without having to, I guess, bring up the comment section. If I hit the forward slash key on the keyboard, you can see that it says say something and I can move this around, start entering text inside it, like hello or something, and I can send a message to my team members. But if I press enter, you can see that it's going to jump down. But if I start entering other text, the first line of text disappears. So it's not permanent, it's temporary. And I think this is a great way to communicate with your team members. Uh, without having to actually type out text or add sticky notes all over your document. Another way to access this is if you go to the top toolbar and go to collaborate, there's uh, the cursor chat button right there. If I click on it, it brings up the cursor chat. Moving on, this is uh, emotes and stamps uh, added into FigJam, and I think it's pretty cool. This is going to allow us to, I guess, communicate with our team members in a more fun and inter interactive way. So if I press E on the keyboard, it, it brings up this dialogue or this modal bubble and we have some preset emotes so i can click on one of them and i can click around my document i can click and hold to spam it if i want it to and if i leave it like this for a couple seconds it disappears if i hold e twice or press e twice on the keyboard it's going to switch over to the stamps and the stamps actually stay on the artboard permanently or until you delete them if I press E again on the keyboard once, it's going to go back to the last used uh, modal and that was the stamps. And if I press E again, it's going to switch over to emotes. If I don't want to use my keyboard, I can also just click on these semicircles and it's going to switch between stamps and emotes. If you had a good eye, you probably noticed this, this uh, cursor chat 
So they actually have a, a, another way to access this within uh, FigJam, and that's basically just by going into your emote section and selecting it that way. But if I go to the stamp section, you also notice that there's my logo or my user profile icon. So I think this is awesome. I love my logo and I think it's a great way to, I guess, stamp my project and, and say that, hey, Vinit, Vinit Designs created this design. They've also given us a tip saying that if you hold down your mouse while stamping, it gives us extra big stamps. So let's give that a try. Let's go to our stamps. Let me select this. Bam! A giant <laughs> Vinit Designs logo. Bam! The other way to add stamps is if you look in the toolbar, we have the stamp button. If I click on it, you can access the same modal just using that toolbar. Moving on, we have Team Library. Team Library is basically a collection of different assets. If I click on the library, you can see that there's like a ton of different uh, illustrations, icons, and graphics we can pull into our design. So um, this is very nice. And there are they're all vector from what it looks like. You can scale them. The sizing doesn't really affect the quality of it. So that's nice. If I want to pin this components box within my document, I can click this and it's going to stay pinned there and I can move it around and position it wherever I want. And it's actually snapping to the document. Uh, so I can snap to the left or the right of my document and I can close out if I don't need it anymore. Let's move on to the last one. The last slide is basically talking about how you can import your designs from Figma. So they've given us an example of a mobile application and I can select it. I can change the size of it, but I can't actually change the design of it. But if I select the text layers, I can actually change the text within the button. I'm going to jump into my Figma design file actually and copy and paste something that I've created here and test it out and see if that works as well. I can see that my design is here perfectly the way I designed it, but I can't edit the design. But if I select the text, like we mentioned earlier, I can change it if I if I want to. You can see that it's kind of breaking breaking the, the layout, the grid, because I don't have auto layout set to this. But if I did, I'm assuming that this would function uh, the way it's meant to be. One more tool I want to show you is the marker tool. They didn't mention it here, but I think the marker tool is going to be one of the most fun ones because uh, you're going to have the option to draw out some nice free flow lines the one thing i don't really see is an eraser button so i'm just not sure how exactly this works uh because there's no way to erase it i can't right click on it to erase uh if i left click it's just gonna draw more lines this just allows me to change the thickness of the line and change the color but there's no actual eraser so if you do know how to use this let me know i, I maybe they just haven't implemented yet, that yet or there's maybe a shortcut on the uh, keyboard where that will allow us to erase different lines and uh, other scribbles that I've made on my design. If I want to share this file, this fake jam file with my team members, I can go to the top and uh, start sharing this the same way we would normally with our other Figma design files by entering their email and setting the permissions whether or not they can edit and you can also copy the link and send it you can copy the embed code and put, paste it inside of your website if you need to and you can actually publish it to the community as well so uh, let's say you create a project that is going to be useful for other people to use you can create a template or some sort of uh, a design file and share it with people uh, from this menu as well. So there you have it. Figma is not a mystery jam. It's just a jam board like functionality. So basically, uh, you're going to be able to create diagrams like you saw, create some awesome UX flows and charts and all that stuff and collaborate within Figma without having to jump back into Miro and back and forth and all that. So um, I think it's going to be great. I still think they're lacking in terms of some functionalities. Uh, obviously the eraser is not there at least not from what i saw maybe figma will release something very soon and that might change that anyways i hope you enjoyed this video and took something out of it if you learned something new smash that like button leave a comment let me know what you learned and also uh, share this video with your friends and your team members if you think that they will find this uh, useful within their workflow and i will see you in the next figma video peace out